is critical because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. If we want to stop this epidemic, we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin. What we have seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. Mass surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them. And we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? What's our blood pressure? What, what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. So I want to talk to you today about the future of our species and really the future of life. We are probably one of the last generations of homo sapiens. Within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. Because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. These will be the main products of the economy, of the 21st century economy. Not textiles and vehicles and weapons, but bodies and brains and minds. And then the big political and economic question of the 21st century will be what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for? Do you have an answer in the book? Um, at present, the best guess we have is uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games. When I say that these are useless humans, it's not from the viewpoint of their mother, of the wife, of the, of the son. It was always very difficult to be in charge of your destiny. What is unique now is that what people, the big danger for people is no longer exploitation, it's irrelevance. I mean, in the previously in history, if you were on the wrong side of history, if you didn't understand what was happening and you, were, and you, you lost the competition, then you ended up as some kind of serf or manual laborer being exploited by the people who understand and have the power. Now, if you're left behind, you're facing something far worse, which is to be completely irrelevant. They won't even need you as a serf or as a slave. The technology will, on the one hand, make it possible to start enhancing and upgrading humans, and on the other hand, especially the rise of AI, will make more and more humans economically unnecessary, useless, and therefore also politically powerless. And the world or humanity might <laughs> have different parts of humanity might have different futures and we might see really a process of some kind of speciation. We don't really know ourselves. To give an example, when I was 21, I finally realized that I was gay after living for several years in denial. And this is not exceptional. A lot of gay men live in denial for many years. They don't know something very important about themselves. Now imagine the situation in 10 or 20 years, when an algorithm can tell any teenager exactly where he or she is on the gay-straight spectrum, and even how malleable this position is. But on a much 
broader and deeper, uh, from a deeper perspective, I think it really is going to shape the future of, of humanity and the future of life itself because the new technologies are, will soon give some corporations and governments the ability to hack human beings. There is a lot of talk about hacking computers, smartphone, emails, bank accounts, but the really big thing is hacking human beings. To hack human beings, you need a lot of biological knowledge, a lot of computing power, and especially a lot of data. If you have enough data about me, and enough computing power and biological knowledge, you can hack my body, my brain, my life. You can reach a point when you know me better than I know myself. And once you reach that point, and we are very close to that point, then democracy, the free market as we have, and actually all political systems, also authoritarian regimes, um, we have no idea what, what happens once you pass that point. Okay, so you don't believe in God. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the world is problematic. There are two kinds of gods in the world. Uh, and people tend to mix them. There is one God, the mystery God, about which we know nothing. The chief characteristic of this God is that he is mysterious. And humans can't understand and can't say anything about this God. Then there is a completely opposite kind of God, the concrete lawgiver God. And about this God, we know far too much. When you ask people about God, they say, oh, it's a big mystery, it's a big mystery, and we don't know, and science can't explain this and that. Okay. And somehow they then switch gods and say, and because of this, women should put a hat on their head. And two men shouldn't have sex with one another. And you should vote for this party or that party. And this is the dangerous trick. And this is the God in which I don't believe. If there is a force responsible for the great mystery of life and the universe and the black holes and the galaxies, I don't think he really cares about female dress code. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity, this will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life four billion years ago. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these